In this video, we're going to take a look at finding zeros or x-intercepts of quadratic functions, both by graphing and factoring. First of all, we need to clear up some terminology here. Um, we can work with quadratic functions. Remember, functions are in this form where we have like a g of x or h of x. Those are functions. If we just have, say, this exact same thing, but it equals maybe 0, that would be an equation. And how we would solve quadratic equations is we look for solutions and roots. The process is nearly the same, but it's important to know that terminology so that you know exactly what you should be doing. So don't be thrown off by it, but understand that the directions may be different depending on if you're given a function or if you're given an equation. Okay, so let's take a look at this first one. And we're going to start by looking at factoring, and if I could do any factoring. Well, I want to get rid of that negative. I want to factor out a negative out of the whole thing here for my first step. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out a negative 1, and then that's going to be x squared, and then pull out a negative 1 out of here is going to make this minus 4x, and then pull a negative out of there, minus 5. And then I'm going to set this equal to 0. Okay, now <clears throat> I'm going to look inside the parentheses here and see if I can't break that up. Well, I have negative 1, and then this piece, let's see, it's going to break up as a trinomial, so it's going to break up into two things. And to find out the signs, I look here, this is a negative, so my signs need to be plus and minus. Then my first term is x squared, so if I put an x and an x, that's going to get me x squared. Then I look for factors of 5 with a difference of 4. Hmm. Let's see, factors of 5. What can I multiply together to get 5? 1 and 5. That's the only thing, because 5 is prime. So how do I know where to put it? Well, because I've got a minus and a plus. I want to end up with a plus 4x, so I'm going to put the larger one in this case with the plus. And notice, if we would FOIL this back out, we would end up back with what we started. If we take FOIL, remember, as first, <coughs> so x squared, then we have the outer, so x times negative 1 would be negative x, inner would be 5 times x, so then we have 4x, and then the last would be minus 5, which is what we have right here, which is what we want. Um, oops, I goofed up. We want to end up with a minus 4x, because that's what I had here. I went back to the original function, so let me do a little backtracking here. This is still a good, a good exercise in just making sure that you're looking at the right stuff. Okay, so I want a minus 4x, so I'm going to put the 5 here, and then the 1 over here. Alright, so now I would end up, I have minus 5x and a plus x, that's going to give me minus 4x. So it foils back to what I had right here. Okay, now the negative 1 stuff that's sitting there, that's not going to affect what I have going on, because the zero product property says that if I multiply some things together, and I've got three things that are multiplied here, one of them has to be zero in order to get zero out. Well, negative one can never be equal to zero, so we're not really concerned about that. However, this could be equal to zero, and so could this. So, I'm going to go ahead and set each of those equal to zero, and then I'm going to solve. So, x plus one equals zero, and then x minus five equals 0. Solve each of those. Subtract 1 on both sides in this case. I have x equals negative 1. Then over here, I'm going to add 5 on both sides. So I end up with x equals 5. So my zeros for this quadratic function are negative 1 and 5. And I found those by factoring. Now, let's check out what would happen if we would graph this. Well, Let's see. Hmm. There's my graph that I put together. 
Do we see the negative 1 and the 5 showing up anywhere in there? Huh, sure enough. Right here, my x-intercepts, so where x equals 0, we have it crossing right here at 5, and it crosses here at negative 1. I'll be darned. So, I can check my solution if I work it out by factoring. If I graph this, I can then look for those x-intercepts, and those should be the same things. So, using two different methods together here to see that all these things are related. Of course, if we were just going to graph, then we would want to find the vertex and then work our way out till we see where exactly that function crosses. So, let's get this out of here and take a look at another one. All right, this next one. <clears throat> in this case, there's nothing that I can pull out of all these, so I'm just going to see if I can factor that. It's going to break up into two things again. Oops. So I have two sets of parentheses. And the signs, well, this is minus, so it's going to be plus and minus. Then I my first term is an x to get that x squared. Then I'm looking for factors of 20 with a difference of 1. Okay, and in this case, we want to end up with a positive. So we're going to put the 5 here. 5 and 4 are those factors. And a 4 here. So it, when we would FOIL it back out, 5x minus 4x, well, that would leave us with a positive 1x, which is what we want. Set this equal to 0. And what that means is that either this needs to be equal to 0 or this needs to be equal to 0 in order to have that product, those two things multiplied together, be equal to 0. So set each of those equal to 0. So x plus 5 equals 0. And then x minus 4 equals 0. Subtract 5 over here. We get x equals negative 5. Then over here we're going to add 4 to both sides and end up with x equals 4. Okay, so there are my zeros. Well, what if we graphed it? Would we end up with the same thing? Let's check it out. Here's the graph for that function, x squared plus x minus 20. And notice, right here, it's crossing the x-axis at 4. And over here, it's crossing the x-axis at negative 5. So sure enough, the graph and the x-intercepts are our zeros, are our solutions if we're working with equations. Okay, let's get that out of here and then take a look at a couple more. <clears throat> In this one, I have that negative with the x again. So the first thing I want to do is pull that negative out of there. So I'm going to get negative 1 times x squared then minus 6, divide that by negative 1, would be plus 6x. Take a negative 1 out of that minus 9, that's going to make that a positive 9. Okay, set that equal to 0. Then, see if we can't break that up. Well, we have that negative 1 still coming along. It's going to be two things. Equals 0. And factors of 9 that are going to add up to 6. Both signs are going to be plus because this is plus, so we look at this one, it's plus. So we have a plus and a plus. First term is going to be an x to get that x squared. Then factors of 9 that add up to 6, that would be 3 and 3. In this case, we have two things that are the same. So we only need to set 1 equal to 0 because obviously they're going to give us the same solution. So x plus 3 equals 0. Oy. 0, then going to subtract 3, subtract 3, we end up with x equals negative 3. Okay, so we're crossing at negative 3. Well, there's only one solution, so what do you think the graph would look like? Huh. The vertex is going to be at negative 3 on the x-axis. That's what it's telling us since there's just that one solution. Okay, let's take a look at this one. 
in this one we've got something that we can divide every piece by we could take out a two from each of them and pull that out front so let's go ahead and do that I'm gonna take a two out of each of these pieces so it's gonna be two times x squared 18x divided by 2 would be 9x and then 28 divided by 2 would be 14 we're gonna set that equal to 0 then see if I can't break that up well break up into two things I look here this is a plus so I look here both signs are gonna be pluses my first term again is an X then I'm looking for factors of 14 that add up to 9 well 2 and 7 and in this case since they're both plus it doesn't matter which way we put those in if we put the 7 over there or the 2 over there either way doesn't matter since they're both plus okay then we've got two things that could be equal to 0 this 2 can't 2 is never equal to 0 so we're not interested in that at this point so we have x plus 2 equals 0 subtract 2 there we have x equals negative 2 and our other one is x plus 7 equals 0 and we're gonna subtract 7 from both sides end up with x equals negative 7 now if you would graph this function where do you think it would cross the x-axis at negative 2 and negative 7 so finding zeros of quadratic functions by graphing and factoring remember first of all that if it's a function we find the zeros or the x-intercepts if it's an equation we look for solutions or roots and the directions will tell you what exactly you're looking for those four things are all found essentially the same way when we do that then we first see if there's anything that we can pull out of our entire function here like this one we pulled a negative one out this one we pulled a negative one out in this case we pulled a two out front then we looked can we break that up it's a trinomial so it's gonna break up into two things factor it then we use the zero product property which means that in order for two things that are multiplied to be zero or more things to be zero at least one of them has to be zero and so we set each piece that could be zero equal to zero and solve those equations we also found that those zeros are where the graph crosses the x-axis so we can use that graph to check use your technology and check to make sure that your zeros are where they should be. I hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.